What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. Today we have Sandeep Saini. Did I, I said it right, right? Sandeep yeah. Saini on the podcast. This is our first ever over Skype, Skype um, podcast. So we're here with Sandeep, photographer. You're just mainly photographer, right? Photographer. I'm trying to get into uh, video. Oh, making you are too. trying to get into video. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how about you just introduce yourself briefly? You know, tell us your age. Um, your gender and then also just like a bit about how you grew up kind of thing where you grew up you know kind of like that backstory general thing if you understand what i mean sure yeah so um hey everyone my name is sandeep i'm 24 in on november 17 okay so pretty soon Ooh. and uh i grew <laughs> up in india birthday, bro. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i grew up in india and been here in canada for almost five years oh, now five years you like it so far Oh, I love it. Amazing the country, cold? amazing people. Cold. Oh, yeah, extremely cold. You like, do you I'm like already the cold? cold. I'm wearing a beanie right now. <laughs> <laughs> do you like the cold? No, I don't. No, because I've, I've met some, I met a, another Indian actually, like, and he's only been here for like, this is his first winter and he is not prepared for, I'm, th- I'm letting no. him know. I'm like, dude, you are not ready for what's about to hit. Like it gets yeah, so cold uh, in the winter. Yeah, because when I came here, my uncle told me uh, it goes to like minus 40. I'm like, yeah, that's just some BS. It can't be like minus 40. And uh, first day, it was like when I landed here, it was like minus 10. Yeah. I'm like, shit, I'm going to die. <laughs> Dude, and in the summer, it gets so hot too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just weird, man. It's in ridiculous. like one week, you can experience all four seasons. <laughs> you experience all four seasons to the extreme. It's like you're in the desert and then you're in the freaking, it's crazy. But That's so you true. moved here five years ago kind of thing and you've liked yeah. it so far. Um, what do you kind yeah. of do as a daily driver? Uh, so as a daily driver right now, I'm a um, uh, diesel mechanic right now. Digital mechanic. What does that, what does that kind of mean? Like heavy diesel mechanic. Oh, diesel mechanic. Sorry. So you yeah. kind of do like con- like trucks and stuff like that? Like okay. Yeah, big yeah. trucks, 18 wheels. So uh, it's pretty, pretty good yeah. career. But like I'm um, mostly trying to get into... YouTube, photography, okay. and more content creation. Yeah, that's yeah. like your main thing. You just kind of have like that yeah. side hustle. So how long, yeah. let, let's get into that then. How long have you been doing photography? When did you get into that? How did that How did that happen? Because I'm always interested how people get into photography. Uh, I never really, like, because with me, the thing was like, I always used to think like, I have no hobby. And okay. uh, <laughs> then I'm like, get into, I'm like, how come people can like, find out what their hobbies are and what their passions are and i have no fucking idea what i'm gonna do and uh, i was watching youtube and it recommended me peter mckinnon peter mckinnon so i'm like okay this guy is fun okay he takes photo and uh, he's funny he's canadian so i might as well watch him so i started watching it and i'm like hmm i never realized like i always love taking photos so i went on kajiji bought canon t four hundred dollars and uh, just got on shooting, and ever since, I never went back, and I just loved it. It's funny because, like, I feel like I have the I had the exact same kind of uh, Peter McKinnon. I will say, and that was actually my next question for you is talking about influences. But Peter McKinnon, I think, has sprouted a huge like community of photographers. Like, you really, if you ever thought of it before that digital era with like you know YouTube and Peter McKinnon, there wasn't that many photographers, no. especially no, not at all. It's really exploded, and I would say, how long have you been doing it then? Like two years kind of thing, a year? Uh, yeah, about two years. About yeah. two years. It's the exact yeah. same thing for me. He pretty much exploded, and I agree with you. Like Most people didn't have passions until they found things like that, and you're like, oh, I love doing this. And Peter McKinnon really was the main guy, and I'm sure there's plenty of examples in other industries of different things, but it's just crazy how like the digital era has sparked, sparked like yeah. growth in so many industries. And nowadays, especially, the creative industry is ginormous. Like, everyone needs photos. If you look at any company, if you're not online and have, like, content of your store, con- like, even if it's just a local business and you don't have content of your store, you're, like, you're done. Like, you just, you you don't, you, you're not, you're going to fall, you're going to fade into the abyss. Um, but yeah, it's, sorry. it's just going to be, like, companies, like, that doesn't want to go with, like, what's trending right yeah so like business that doesn't want to move online they're gonna suffer yeah because they need photos they need content yeah. to promote 
like digital marketing is the marketing to go right now. Exactly. You can't, nobody's going for a newspaper anymore to, yeah. or advertising. No, 100%. I don't even remember if I ever like open up a newspaper anymore. <laughs> Honestly, I'm yo- I'm younger. I'm like 18. I've never opened a newspaper. Anyone who's a millennial has never I like maybe like I've seen one of them, but all we use newspapers for is like fires. You know, like yeah. when you <laughs> start trying to start That's a fire. True. Yeah. Um but moving on, um influences. As you talked Peter McKinnon, was there anyone else that kind of sparked um interest into you or was it mainly just him? No, mainly just mainly him. Mainly just him. Yeah. Then I just like started following all the dope squad, like Peter McKinnon, okay, Maddie, Maddie Yopoya, yeah, Maddie Yopoya, Ellen. Has there been anyone else since then? Like, have you seen like I know Alan Palander has been a huge one. Most people that I ask always like talk about Alan Palander and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I love his feet. I love the colors he yeah. chooses, like orange and black. Okay. That's what I'm going for right now. You're a very feetish guy, eh? Because I'm actually trying yeah, to get into yeah. that. I think the thing about Instagram nowadays, and I've realized this comparing it to other social medias, it's become more of a portfolio, I find. Like, you know, when a company yeah. is like, yo, what's like, where can I see your work? You can either send them to a website or your Instagram because your Instagram is, Instagram, a, especially yeah. for photographers yes. and videographers, is Instagram is a very good, um, what was I even saying? A good, uh, a good, a good like, place. A good platform to show their work. To show your work. It's, 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 yeah. it's less about like, you know, kind of like giving tips and stuff like that. I think it's more of a, of a, of a work showing thing, but I want to, I want to kind of clarify when, so it was two years ago, you saw Peter McKinnon video and then was it yeah. just like, you were just like, yo, let me just get into this. Or was it kind of like, was there a time, like a, like a time gap? Does that make sense? Like a time gap? No, like, like, yeah, like I started watching him and... Uh, you were just watching him to watch like, him? Yeah, like I, I was like started watching him on YouTube for no reason. I didn't have any camera on me. Okay. His videos are just like fun to watch, right? Yeah. You can like oh, agree yeah, to that. Are. Even if you're not a photographer, <laughs> you just watch his videos like, yeah, this guy is funny. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, after that, I'm like, okay, so uh, let's see how much the cameras are. So uh, I got into research. One of my friend did the whole... Uh, the photography course in school so okay. i texted him i'm like hey i need a camera can you suggest something uh he's like okay go for uh canon t6 or t5 yeah I'm like okay i looked up online picked up in a week it was like used camera yeah so picked oh, it up started cheap. shooting yeah yeah did you shoot phone before that or where did you go straight no in? no you, just always done directly it. go with dslr yeah and how did like the learning process for you go do, do you shoot manual nowadays or are you still using, i just use manual use from manual. day one i started using manual oh you started using from day one yeah. was, it, was it frustrating yeah. at first Cause oh I, yeah because exposure triangle is just so messed up <laughs> like i would say like not too long ago i realized like if you want too much details if you're taking landscapes you should go like higher aperture yeah right and <laughs> i texted you people and i used to think like oh like f1.4 or f1.2 is the way to go but like if you're taking like let's say landscapes oh, you want to go like f11 f22 yeah, or something it. like that yeah yeah and i had no idea <laughs> I'm like, oh, my photos, I don't know, I, I don't know why my photos are not sharp enough or why I can't have focus. Yeah. It was just, it was just messed up. No, like, There's like too much to learn and like too little to learn at the same time. Yeah, no, someone talked to me about it too. It's like the thing about the exposure triangles, it's not even just about exposure. When you do something yeah. to one thing, it affects like, for example, aperture, it affects sharpness. For example, if you boost yeah. your ISO, it's going to affect the graininess of the image. Graininess. For example, if you boost your shutter speed, it doesn't have to do just with exposure. It's also just with yeah. the whole area of the image. And it's funny how just three simple settings and you just change those settings around. Change everything. I read a book. I started doing more um, like slow shutters now, long exposures. Okay. So uh, I've been having like pretty fun with oh, that those too. Those are super fun to do, especially. My only issue is like in the winter... I hate doing long exposure because it's like you're literally just standing there for 30 seconds and it's like freezing. I don't know if I'm going to shoot during the winter. Do you plan to shoot during the winter? Do you usually shoot during the winter? I am this year because last year I didn't shoot any. If you look at my like feed, there's not enough winter stuff. There's fall stuff and like summer stuff. And uh, it's pretty cool. Like yesterday I went to Rideau Mall to, you know, the light tunnel. They, They put it out there. I it's the newest attraction. You should go check it okay. out. So I think like I might like in downtown. About. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Took some photos. It was like super windy, yeah. but I was like super happy with the photos. So I, 
I I'm get gonna, it. I'm gonna... Especially when it's cold, it, it just makes it so tough to get good images too because you're just like, I'm just freezing right now. But I think the key, yeah. I just need to get some really, really good gloves. I think that's the key because if your hands are frozen in photography, like it is game you over. You can't take photos. Only yeah. Canadian <laughs> photographers that are listening to this will understand, but like it's it's actually annoying to shoot in the winter because you're just, especially video. I've actually ne- I've shot video in the winter, but shooting video like and having stable footage when it's so cold yeah. is. When, just, when your hands are shaking, it's not easy to get like a stable dude, video. So you're you're so done. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the present a bit. Um, is there anything you're very passionate about now? You just talked about long exposure, but are you? Is there any new like main things you really are learning like video? Are you actually learning video right now, or are you just plan? To yeah, do learning a lot about like Adobe Premiere, okay. like editing. How do you shooting, how do you right? learn about how do you learn? I'd like to ask that. You, <clears throat> YouTube. YouTube is the main thing. Have you ever taken yeah, any I don't know. other courses? No, no, never. No. I don't know why people complain. They're like, yeah, like we want to learn something. I don't know where to go. Well, like everything is on YouTube. YouTube is the best thing you can like look up resources on oh yeah photography video making everything yeah like it's up there you just gotta put in some effort do you have a process for how you learn or you just what is how do you learn things you're just like oh i want to know what this does and go search it or do you just kind of like go okay let's start with this 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 like how do you how do you how do you take on like a new learning process towards like a like a program like adobe premiere how would you yeah. attack how do you attack learning that program do you just go in and just do random stuff no, I will say like when you want to learn something new, like let's say Adobe Premiere or Lightroom. Yeah. Go with basics. Like try to learn what each slider do and what like compositions are, rule of third, how what is four by five is, and um, start following some people who use Adobe Premium or Adobe Lightroom. Okay. That shows you how to edit photos. Don't follow like too many different people because everybody's gonna tell you something different. Oh really? That's yeah, so stick with like uh, three, four, five people oh. max when you're learning. Okay. And once you're like comfortable enough with the program, follow like lots of people and okay. see how they edit and how they can help you to edit your photos. Yeah, don't take in too much information at the start because then you'll get, you know, completely. It's just overwhelming. Yeah. You, you can't. Everybody, like I met so many amazing photographers yeah. that take amazing photos. But when I ask them, I'm like, hey, why didn't you edit this photos? They're like, we don't know how to edit photos. I'm like, really? you guys need to edit photos. Like, there's so much more you can put in your photo. They're like, now nah, we just like it like that. I'm like, it's your photos, but it will just look a little bit better. Yeah. If you like. That's it. interesting. They don't edit their photos, eh? No, nope. no, they don't. And people ask me, like, what program do you use? I'm like, it's uh, Lightroom. They're like, okay, is it free? I'm like, it's, it's free for a month, but, like, if you're serious about your photography or if you want to really invest in it, so spending, like, 10, 20 bucks a month, it's not going to hurt you, right? Yeah. Oh, especially. And the thing I tell people all the time nowadays is they don't know. People don't know, but Lightroom Mobile is free, and it has all the exact same features. Everything, do you yeah. Use, do you use Lightroom Mobile? Yeah, I yeah. do. I, I was going to, like, make a video about, like, editing a photo on Lightroom Mobile. Oh, really? Mobile. Yeah. Have you made any videos yet on your YouTube? I haven't. I haven't. made, like three okay so far yeah <laughs> i was like i was like you know when you post like when you're stuck in the uh the quality over quantity okay, yeah. i was stuck there okay uh, no right now i don't want to go there i just want to like focus on quantity more over than quality more i'm more. like quality will come if you like focus on quantity okay so let's talk about that for a second how do you how do you what's your relationship with that like for example when you're editing a photo or a video do you really get stuck? Do you usually find yourself getting stuck? Which one do you bend t- more towards when you're editing photos? We'll, we'll start with like, that. Before, I used to like post everything, whatever, whatever edit, apply the filters, and like scroll the sliders. Okay. Be like, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I used to sliders, post I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, but like, I'm mostly focused on how my feed looks. Okay. So I'm trying to get the uh, photos to match the colors. Okay. So right now I'm going for like really dark and orange tones. So if you looked up, you will see. Like oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I just took a, I just took a look for oh. sure. You, you're very in the fallish orange, dark tones kind of thing. Yeah. Do you do you transition it's that usually? <laughs> What's that? When, when, when did you start um, doing more like feed based stuff? When did, when did you transition into that? Not too long ago, to okay. be honest. I think this fall, I will say, I, I thought like I, I want to make sure my feed look consistent. Okay. 
I want to transition also into a question. Do you do you ever do paid work or is it all personal for you? Just a hobby? No, I haven't done any. You know, okay. I haven't done any paid. Do you want to do any paid work? Because I'll tell you, it's a it's a different beast. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I want to get into that because, okay. like, I don't know, like, if you believe in nine to five that you can do nine to five for the rest of your life, I believe I cannot do nine to five for the rest of my life. Oh, nine to and, five. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Um, I know. I wanna. Yeah, I want to, like, make sure that I work for myself. Okay. And, like, photography is, like, something I would love to do. And, like, if it, if it can, like, pay my bills too at the same time, so why not, right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I think especially just if you enjoy doing it and it's something you love to do, then you're just, you're, you're just going to be so much happier with your life. And I completely agree with you. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever, uh, made any, have you ever had any like calls from brands and things like that? Or is it something completely new to you? No, like I just have like features from like McDonald's Canada, like Corona Canada. Okay. They just like feature my stuff on okay. their page. Yeah, so yeah. that just made me really happy. Okay. Oh yeah. The, the first money I made in photography was 25 cents <laughs> how, how do you make that tell us that story <laughs> so like i learned about like uh shutter stock that you can sell your photos online i'm like hmm that's interesting okay so i would try that so i posted a bunch of photos there and i uh, took this photo at niagara falls <laughs> of the ferris wheel there and somebody downloaded that photo and it paid me 25 cents and it just blew my mind <laughs> You're excited, eh? <laughs> yeah, I was like somebody um, bought my stuff. Do you use a lot of Do you use a lot of stock photo websites? Is that like a, a no? Uh, I just did it, then I forgot about it. So it was like uh, twenty five cents. Okay. Because like I uploaded a bunch of photos, then I forget about it. Yeah. Then uh, a year later, and uh, I realized so I'm like, hey, I uploaded some photos. Let's see if any any somebody downloaded. It. And uh, somebody went down with like 25 cents. <laughs> that just blew my mind. Hey, it's just start. And I think especially, yeah. especially for me, even when like I've never sold, I've tried selling stock video, but I never things. But when you, when you're, when you see the potential that you can make money off something, like even if it's just 25 cents, it's always scalable, right? So you always, you know, if I can make 25 cents off of this, I can make, you know, a dollar, I can make $2, I can make $10, I can make $100. And it just keeps scaling like that, which is which is a good spark of hope. But you haven't you haven't dabbled in sh in, sh in uh, stock photo. I think it's a very oversaturated no. thing nowadays, I find. It's really hard to sell your stuff. Um, it is really hard because the, because uh, like stock photography, I remember like, uh, one of like Peter McKinnon's video, he talked about how he got into like stock photography. Yeah. And he sold like photos of pile of leaves, right? Yeah. And he made like I don't know about like twelve thousand dollars or like twenty five thousand dollars off that single photo yeah. over like ten years. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just amazing. Like you can just make money by like just putting your photos all in for people to download, right? Yeah. So yeah, like it was twenty five cent and another like a year later, I got another download. Yeah, twenty five cents, and I think last week somebody again downloaded some fireworks photos. <laughs> so I made like one dollar. I was like, oh my god, I'm rich. <laughs> Good job, bro. No, like I've never dabbled in that, but I do. I do believe, especially for stock photo, one thing you have to do is 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 shoot for the purpose of stock photo. The thing yeah. is, like, when you're just, especially even for video, like, when you're just putting videos out there, there's a chance. But if you really want to make those sales, like Peter McKinnon was making, you have to yeah. look at what people are looking for and then do that. And also the thing is, like, nowadays, there's just so many photos out there. There's so many options. You you have to take photos of stuff that there's nothing out there of. Or else, like, That's you know, true. you're just going to get thrown down by all the other photographers out there and, yeah. and things like that. And it's just, it's not as reliable. But, um... Let's talk about misconceptions because you've been doing it for two years, right? So photography, anything you, because I've had, I, if I think of it, I've had some misconceptions, but like when you, when you first started, you're, you thought something was like something, but then once you actually do it, do you understand what I mean? Like you, it's a misconception. Like you go in and you're like, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sure you understand what I mean, but like you yeah, thought no, something I in totally photography it, yeah. and then once you start doing it, you realize you're completely wrong. Any mis misconceptions you had when... <laughs> Tips for people who are so, starting photography. Yeah, I can tell you that, like, when I bought my first DSLR, and uh, in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a pro photographer. Okay. I'm going to take photos. It's going to look so good. It's going to be, like, creamy pokey at the background. 
and uh, people are gonna ask me for work to take their photos and they're gonna pay me yeah and nothing like that no it's not that <laughs> it took you a while to get out of auto okay to get to the manual settings and there's so much to learn about like gears and like lenses to use to get like good results right yeah so uh I was like, yeah, I'm just going to put on my camera on auto and it's going to just take the best photos for me. Yeah. And no, it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen at did all. Have, did you ever break through that? And and, and how, how long did it take to, to start to start learning, learning manual, to, be comfortable with manual? So like for first week, I started doing just like auto to see like what kind of photos does it take. Okay. Then like next week, I learned about like you should to, uh, shoot in manual. I'm like, okay, I will start shooting in manual. A week after that, I learned like you should sh- shoot uh, raw photos instead of JPEGs. Okay. And I'm like, okay, that's something new. So start shooting raw. And then you learn like, oh, you, you need to edit your photos if you shoot raw. I'm like, okay, that's something new again. So I have to buy like the software now. Yeah, okay. So get into that. And then like you edit your photos on like, oh yeah, you're not uploading your photos properly because you need to adjust the settings. So if you need to upload it on Instagram, you need to like crop it in a certain way and like uh, shrink down the quality a little bit so it will look good on Instagram. So I'm like, okay, that's something new again. So like there's always something new to learn when it comes to photography. Do you, did you ever get frustrated during that process? Because I know I got frustrated sometimes when it's just like, especially when I was learning manual, I was just like, I just can't get the photo right. Did you ever get frustrated? And then how did you break out of that frustration? And yeah, because like with, with manual, the hardest thing I found was like focusing. Like I could like get the uh, settings set, but I could never take the focus perfectly. Okay. So uh, yeah, but now like I'm, I'm shooting with Sony. So it's like super easy. Like the focusing okay. is like really good on Sony cameras. Do you know what you were doing so, wrong before? Yeah, because like... <laughs> I was doing wrong, like, because uh, I didn't know anything about focusing methods. So it used to be, like, on the center focus, when I'm but I'm trying to get something focused on the side. Yeah. So when, like, the photo, like, take the photo, put it in the computer and check, it was like, why it's not focused properly? Because, <laughs> like, I wasn't using the right focusing method and focusing styles. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> lesson learned. Hey, man, you, you, I'm sure you've made a lot of mistakes. Is there any mistakes that you would tell, you know, people who are starting to, to avoid, like obvious things that that, um, that you made that you yeah, tell people? Yeah, I, I will say like when people get into like editing photos, okay. don't boost up the clarity all the way up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people, I've done that looks good you think oh that it's hdr and it's look amazing well it does not look good <laughs> and boosting clarity all the way I've up there too i've bad. been there too People yeah just... i did that and i used to think like oh shit these look so good well they don't <laughs> was there anything else you would crank up a lot and you realize like anything that you thought looked good and then uh... oh tk's clarity oh my God. sorry it just saying. gives like dehaze or clarity, okay. like boost it up all the way up. It just looks like so good, but it's not. No, <laughs> no. I'm sure your editing style has, and, has has transferred. So, how how would you say it's it's evolved your editing style? Were you um, very very color focused kind of guy, or did how did how did you evolve as an editor? Like, did you start? Did you start with cranking your sliders a lot and then over time start to to drop it and things like that? Yeah, so like in starting, I, like everything, like I will say like everyone who gets into like, let's say Lightroom, okay. the first thing they will do, they will like bring down the highlights all the way down, lift up the shadows and like lift up the clarity. That just gives you like okay looking photo, Okay. right? Yeah. But like if you want your photos to stand out, right you gotta put in the effort to make them look a certain way so my recent photos my blacks are like really crushed i have oranges reds there are no greens there are no blues in the photos because i took them out okay all the way yeah so like that's kind of style i'm going for right now okay it's definitely gonna change this winter but like uh do you it's just important to i think it's really important to know your style okay It, it takes like for like first year, I had no idea. Like I don't know how people find their niche when it comes to photography, because uh, food photography or landscapes or travel. 
and uh, I had no idea like how I'm gonna find my niche. Yeah. So how did you I'll say like shoot everything? That? Shoot everything. Okay. Yeah, shoot everything, post everything, and see what you like, what your audience like, and try to build your uh, audience what according you, to what that. What would you say your main focus of photography is right now? I see a lot of kind of landscape ish, but it's like tight La- landscape. Mostly, I would say I would say like travel. Travel, okay. <laughs> uh, it, com- it comes landscape, architecture, street, all you can include. I'm I'm not good in like portraits. Okay. I would say no, you don't do that a yeah. lot. Do you, no, tra- do you travel a lot then? I never did portraits. No, like I, yeah, I've been traveled here in Canada a lot, but okay. like I want to travel like more. Okay. I want to go to Marine Lake next summer. Oh, that's super nice. Yeah, yeah, I want to like spend some quality time there. Do you travel? Then you travel around here, kind of thing, like just to local parks, or do you travel like? Yeah, lo- yeah, local parks okay. all the time. Uh, I usually go to Hogback Falls. Hogback Falls, I love that place. Yeah, like. It's just like, I think I'm too lazy when I go there because like I brought my girlfriend at Carlton University. I'm like, okay, I need to go somewhere to take photos. So I just go Hogback Falls. And then you just start <laughs> taking photos. Hey, Hogback Falls is photos. super nice. Um, But is there any areas that you would say, I, I'm not going to like, you suck at or like you're not very good at that you're really trying to improve and that you are consciously, like you know you're trying to improve that area. Because I know your editing is amazing. But is there anything you want to practice more of? Like, um, I don't know, for example, video or you said you're bad at portraits. Do you want to learn more portraits? Yeah, like I I would like think about like portraits is not like I'm not interested in and I'm like super bad at it. Okay. Because I'm bad in in a way because I don't know how to tell the model like how to pose, right? It's it's a photographer's job to tell the model how to pose in a way and not how you're gonna pose your pose. It, it, I think it's a mixture. It's like when you're shooting a movie, it's not only the director's job to make the movie, but also everyone who's on the crew and the actors to act the way that they think the person should be. But I do understand where you're coming from, where you need to be confident. But are you making any steps to practice that? Do you want to learn more portraiture kind of thing? No, no, not at all. I want to learn like mostly video making. Yeah, okay. So like that's where my focus is right now do you shoot just youtube videos or are you trying to also learn other types of video making like you know documentary? like right now i just want to focus on youtube on youtube yeah. so just main like kind of studio studio setups and things like that yeah i'm thinking about like starting uh like uh, i st- already started a small channel and uh, i was thinking of posting about more like uh editing tips or okay. like how i take my photos well, yeah, that's and the, how i edit them yeah one thing i'll i'll give to you and i'll let you know is i i do a bit of youtube and i read a book recently called youtube secrets i don't know if you've you've read it but um no it's a uh, it's a it's these people and they give you tips but one thing on youtube is you really need to be specific to a niche and especially with your editing skills um being able to be specific to the editing niche and giving a lot of editing tips rather than shooting tips um, is, is super powerful. And, and same for me, for me, I think my, my biggest skill is video editing. Like I'm, I'm an all right shooter, but I can edit like insane, insanely quick, insanely things like that. So that's like my main focus on YouTube and especially for beginning YouTube, being able to set yourself apart and, and specify to a niche, Ni- a niche a niche with things that 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 uh that that you understand um is there any uh goals then for your youtube channel that you're trying to to accomplish at the moment like uh, even short-term goals like oh i want 100 subscribers by the end of uh this year or something like that like this year no probably like next year i would try to get like two thousand thousand subscribers two thousand subscribers by next year yeah 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 definitely do you have a plan for that or are you just kind of posting videos because i've loved i'd love to know especially just for myself like your strategy yeah of doing that because like my plan is to like post at least one video a week one video a week yeah definitely okay. it just suffers you just like get too much into like how your photos look you just like stop enjoying your work right yeah don't get stuck too much into like how your photos look. If you like it, especially when you're starting, if you like it, just post it. Figure out your niche later. Figure out your color grade later and how your grid looks later. But right now, just like take photos, add them, post them. That's it. So just start. That's what you would tell people. Just start. Yeah. Hundred percent agree. Start. How do you feel your 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 journey has been so far? Did, have you loved it as a photographer? Yeah. Like I'm super close to like 1,000 followers. Okay, and, congratulations. Uh, Me too, bro. Like, <laughs> I think yeah, we're actually like, very that's... similar at the same amount of followers. 
Yeah, I'm like, that's huge. So uh, it, it, it's like, it feels good when pe- actually people love your work, enjoy right? Your, enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm happy with that. Oh, there's a question I was going to ask you, but I forget. So we're going to wrap it up here. Question to ask everyone for now, what is your go-to camera setup? What do you use? What is your daily main setup? So right now I'm using Sony A7 III. Do you like it so far? Oh, I love that. It. It's, it's amazing. And what did you shoot uh, I was saying you shot Canon right before that? Yeah, Canon T6. Yeah. And Has it been a hard switch? Not really, because I didn't use didn't own too much gear in Canon, so it wasn't like super hard for me. Okay. And uh as but as, like, like learning curve. Yeah, the like, learning curve is different. Okay. I hate Sony settings. It's just too much going on. Oh really? Yeah, if you use a Sony before, like everyone who's used Sony, they will agree with me. Sony settings sucked. Yeah. There were too many pages, too many things. You can't even find stuff in there. But like the thing about Sony cameras I love is like they're super light and uh, the batteries are amazing. The autofocus are amazing. And you go- you have a like, good selection of glass too Yeah. when it comes to Sony. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, 100%. What I, what I always tell people is like, Sony in the tie in the high end, Sony destroys any single, any single camera because right now, especially Canon's lacking behind. I don't know about Nikon. I don't search them too much, um, but but Sony. Nikon is for old people. <laughs> you say it too. I met a girl yesterday. Yeah. I met the last girl I had on my podcast shot Nikon, and I made fun of her as well. She likes it. I'm sure it's good. Like I'm sure it's great, but like. You know, it's just the stereotype. Nikon yeah. is for old, yeah. for old people. <laughs> but Sony at the top end, Sony is abs- especially with their just with their mirrorless line, they're just destroying everything. And if Canon doesn't make that switch and upgrade yeah. that switch, then then they're gonna fall behind. But I do love Canon colors, especially for video. I don't know if it shows as much in photo, but on my yeah. video, if I compare it to to other people's video, like I I don't no, have to. I, color- I can agree to that. I don't yeah. have to color grade my stuff that often, like a light like a light contrast. Yeah. Um, but what is your dream? Or oh, sorry, I didn't ask what, what what was your glass that you're using right now? I'm just using the kit lens right kit now. Lens. Hey man, works perfect. Yeah. I love the kit lens yeah. as well. I kind of I'm, I'm it's I, just like I, I want to get into like a couple wide angle lenses by like Tamron. Yeah, but like it's just too expensive yeah. right now. So I'm trying to like use my kit lens for like at least a couple more months when yeah, I can yeah, save up some enough 100%. money. Glass is expensive, man. I a hundred percent agree with you. It's hard to make that investment. But um, what is your dream camera setup then? What do you want? What, uh, is, there, is there a main thing you see that you want right now? Or like, you know, you want in the future? Uh, for future? Have no, man. Like Sony. Yeah, no, like the Sony I have right now, like I wanted this camera for like so long okay. and I'm super happy with this camera. It's going to do what like, I like to do right now, photos, videos, and do amazing stuff. But like, there are lots of lenses I want to get. So, yeah, the basic, like, the god of lenses, the holy trinity of lenses, <laughs> I want to get those. So, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, or like 17 to 28, yeah. or like 16 to 35. Yeah. So, I want to have like all three lenses. You have and all I'm, your I'm choices thinking. of lenses. Because really, at the end of the day, if you just have all your focal lengths and a camera that works, you're you're not yeah. limited in anything. You you can do really anything you want as long as you have a, a fast enough lens with a low enough aperture for certain low light conditions. Then you're good. And I think people, exactly, yeah. people don't invest enough in good glass when everyone invests in the body. But really, the glass in the end of the day is what's gonna give you different perspectives and things like that. Not not a new camera. But new cameras are nice. I do agree with you. Um, yeah. So you want to let the people know, is there any future of you, any plans, people, things people should stay f- tuned for? I know you, they should check out your YouTube. Everyone check out his YouTube. Um, and you can also yeah, plug, your, like, plug yourself at this time. <laughs> yeah, like I would definitely say like uh, if you want to watch more like Ottawa stuff or like Ottawa photos, just – give me a follow on journey via lens yep. and uh if you're a local lot of photographer and want to go out take some photos i'll be done okay guys uh, what, what's your instagram again plug that what is it again? Uh, journey via lens journey via lens everyone check him out yep. anything you want to leave the people with i know you let me know your mantra this can be a good time to let people know your mantra for life i i have a bunch of them okay so what's your favorite I'm- one <laughs> I will say my favorite one is like, whew, 
if you can dream it, you can achieve it okay. straight out. Yeah, so if you can see yourself somewhere in like next five years, if you can't even dream about it, you will never get there. Thank you guys for listening to Shutter Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll see you in the next one.